Hi there, boys and girls. Are you ready for story time with Mr. Riddle? Today we're going to read On Beyond Zebra by Dr. Seuss. It's kind of like one of our alphabet storybooks, except this one goes past letter Z. On Beyond Zebra. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Said Conrad Cornelius O'Donnell O'Dell, my very young friend who is learning to spell. The A is for ape, and the B is for bear. And the C is for camel, and H is for hare. The M is for mouse, and the R is for rat. I know all the 26 letters like that. Through to Z is for zebra. I know them all well, said Cornelius, or excuse me, Conrad Cornelius O'Donnell O'Dell. So now I know everything anyone knows from beginning to end from the start to the close, because Z is as far as the alphabet goes. <clears throat> then he almost fell flat on his face on the floor when I picked up the chalk and drew one letter more, a letter he never had dreamed of before. And, he, and I said, you can stop if you want with the Z. Because most people stop with a Z, but not me. In the places I go, there are things that I see that I never could spell if I stopped with a Z. I'm telling you this because you're one of my friends. My alphabet starts where your alphabet ends. I'll show you the letters first. That's a new letter. My alphabet starts with this letter cause, called yuz. It's the letter I use to spell yuzamatuz. You'll be sort of surprised what there is to be found once you go beyond Z and start poking around. The yuzmatuz. show you the letters, then I'll read it. So on beyond zebra, explore like Columbus. Discover new letters like wum is for wumbus. My, my high spouting whale who lives high on a hill and who never comes down till it's time to refill. So on beyond Z, it's high time you were shown that you really don't know all there is to be known. Then just step a step fur step further past Wum is for Wumbus, and there you'll find Um, and Um is for Umbus, a sort of cow with one head and one tail, but to milk this great cow you need more than one pail. She has 98 faucets that give milk quite nicely, perhaps 99, I forget just precisely. And boy, she is something most people don't see, because most people stop at the Z, but not me. I ramble, I scramble through swamp, swamp and through swamp, where the letters get better like letters like humph. There's a real handy letter. What's handy about it? You just can't spell humph humph a dumpfer without it. If you stay home with zebra, you're stuck in a rut. But on beyond zebra, you're anything but. Why, I know a fine fancy letter called fuddle. 
I use it in spelling Miss Fuddle Dee Duddle. And oh, what a bird of a bird of a bird of. Her tail is the longest that's ever been heard of. So long and so fancy she'd be in a fix. If she didn't have helpers, it takes about six to tag along hoisting Miss Fuddle Dee Duddle's wonderful tail out of Muddle Dee Puddles. All those helpers carrying her tail. And Glick. Glick is for a glicker who lives in wild weeds and spends his time juggling fresh cinnamon seeds, which he's usually able to find in great number, except, of course, in the month of September, when cinnamon seeds aren't around in great number. So that month, he juggles with seeds of a cucumber. <clears throat> And nuh. Nuh is the letter I use to spell nutches, who live in small caves known as niches for hutches. These nutches have troubles, the biggest of which is the fact that there are many more nutches than niches, and each nutch in a niche knows that some other nutch would love to move would like to move into his niche very much. So each nutch in a niche has to watch that small niche. Or nutches who haven't got niches will snitch. Nutches living in niches. Then we go on to snee. And the snee is for sneedle, a terrible kind of ferocious mosquito whose humdinger stinger is sharp as a needle the sneedle's too tough to be killed with a smack so he has to be hunted on an elephant's back and your eyes and your elephants have to be keen and you have to aim fast and you have to hit clean and the bullet you shoot is the is a stale navy bean that you've dunked for three weeks in old sour kerosene which is most awfully hard work so it's easy to see why most people stop at the Z, but not me. When you go beyond zebra, who knows? There's no telling what wonderful things you might find yourself spelling. Like Quan is for Quandary, who lives on a shelf in a hole in the ocean alone by himself and he worries each day from the dawn's early light and he worries just worries far into the night he just stands there and worries he simply can't stop is his top side his bottom or bottom side top And Thnad is for Thnadners. And oh, are they sad. Oh, the big one you see has the smaller one's shadow. And the shadow the small Thadn Thnadner has should be his. I don't understand it, but that's how it is. A terrible mix-up in shadows. Gee whiz. The long shadows. Look how small it is and how big it is. <clears throat> and spaz is the letter I use to spell spasm, a beast who belongs to the nasm of basim. Handy for traveling, that's why he has them. More easy to pack than a suitcase or a grip, those horns carry all that he needs on a trip. A thread and a needle for mending his socks, his toothbrush, a cup, and two three-handed clocks. 
and his velvet umbrella, his vegetable chopper, and also his gold-plated popping corn popper, and a grasshopper cage for his favorite grasshopper. <clears throat> oh my goodness. And Floob is for Floob Boober Bab Boober Bubs who bounce in the water like blubbery tubs. They're no good to eat. You can't cook them like steaks, but they're handy in crossing small oceans and lakes. Zats. Zats is the letter I use to spell that's it, whose nose is so high that most nobody pats it. And patting his lonely old nose is the least that a fellow could do for this fine friendly beast. So, to get there and do it, I built an invention. The three-seater that's its nose patting extension. If you try to drive one, you'll certainly see why most people stop at the Z. But not me. Jog is my letter for spelling jogoons who doodle around in the far desert dunes. Just doodle around, crooning very sad tunes about peppermint, peanuts, and pebbles, and prunes, and paint pots, and polka dots, pinheads, and pigs, and their grandmother's grandfather's stepsister's wigs. So you see, there's no end to the things you might know, depending on how far beyond zebra you go. I have a letter called Flun, and the Flun is for Flunnel, a softish nice fellow who hides in a tunnel. He only comes out of his hole, I'm afraid, when the right kind of softish nice music is played. One a kind of a hunting horn called the O'Grunth, and to learn how to play it takes month, a month after month of practicing, practicing isn't much fun, and besides, it's quite heavy, weighs almost a tonth. That's why a few people bother to play the O'Gunth. So the Flunnel's been out of his tunnel just once. To play soft music to get him to come out. <clears throat> and way, way past Z is the letter called Itch. And itch is for itchapods, animals which race around back and forth, forth and back through the air on a very high sidewalk between here and there. They're afraid to stay there. They're afraid to stay here. And they think there is too far. They think here is too near. And since here is too near and there is too far, they are too scared to roost wheresoever they are. There's a letter called Yik, and the Yik is for the Yekko, who howls in an underground grotto in Gecko. These Yekkos love echoes, and this is their motto. For best Yekko echoes, try Gecko, our grotto. Sure are some strange letters. Here's another one. Oh, the things you can find if you don't stay behind. On a world near to the sun live two brothers called Vrooms, who strangely enough are built sort of like brooms. And they're stuck all alone up there, high in the blue. And so to kill time just for something to do, 
Each one of these fellows takes turns with the other in sweeping the dust off his world with his brother. And hi is my letter for high gargolorum for getting me places real fast i'm all for em they puffle along and their brakes never squeak and they run every hour every day of the week from the town of north nub to the town of east ounce making stops at, at west bungenfield yupster and younce and at ipswich and nipswich and also south bounce and around small and another small town that's too hard to pronounce The places I took him, I tried hard to tell, young Conrad Cornelius O'Donnell O'Dell, a few brand new wonderful words he might spell. I led him around and I tried hard to show. There are things beyond zebra, or excuse me, beyond Z that most people don't know. I took him past zebra as far as I could, and I think perhaps, maybe, I did some good. Think it was good? Taught him new letters, different letters. Because finally he said, this is really great stuff. And I guess the old alphabet just isn't enough. Now, the letters he uses or something to see. Most people still stop at the Z, but not he. He keeps going with new letters. The end. Now at the end of the story, there's actually a list of letters for people who don't stop at Z. Do you want to look at the letters one more time? Yes. For yuzmatuz, glick for glicker, wum is for wumbus, nuh is for nutches, um is for umbus, snee for sneedle, humph is for the humpha dumpfer, quan is for quandary, fuddle is for miss fuddle de duddle, thnad is for thnadners, spaz is for spasm. Itch is for itchapods. Flub, flubber bit. <laughs> His flub is for. Sorry, flub is for flububber bab boober bubs, and yek is for yekko. Zats is for zats it. Vru is for vrooms. Jog is for jagoons. High is for high gargle or um. Flun is for flunnel. It's real letters. Hmm. And what do you think we should call this one anyhow? What letter should that be called? The end. On Beyond Zebra by Dr. Seuss. I hope you enjoyed the story. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.